Hey everyone, Lucas here and I want to talk to you today about digital learning here in Surrey County Schools and this thing you'll be hearing a lot about this year called the SAMR framework. So let's get started. Before I jump too far in, I want to let you know about some assumptions that I have going into this presentation. One, I assume that you care deeply about your learners and you want to see them grow. I also assume that you're an educator who's a professional and you genuinely care and want to improve your craft in the classroom. And lastly, I believe that you believe that there are at least some places where technology and digital tools can make learning a lot better and actually improve it in some cases. Before we get too far in, let's take a moment and learn a little bit from penguins. Who knew? As we watch this video, I want you to look at it as an analogy for where we are when we come to integrating technology into the classroom um, and what the barriers are and that sort of thing. So let's get started. <laughs> After we skip this ad, it's a good movie, I'm sure. Okay, so think about those penguins. They're, they're kind of like us in a lot of ways when it comes to integrating technology in the classroom. Sometimes there are barriers. Um, sometimes those barriers are technical barriers. Um, they may be barriers with um, the hardware, with the infrastructure, maybe it's the filter, maybe it's, it could be anything. Uh, but there are often barriers. But sometimes those barriers are, are personal barriers. Maybe their lack of confidence. Um, maybe um, it's it's our learners. Maybe that they are. Maybe they are, or we see them as a barrier to learning. So think just a moment. What are those barriers that you identify? Think about those penguins as they're trying to move forward, and how different ones of them approached it. So. Think about the, it, it, which penguin do you most identify with? Do, are you the penguin who just jumps in straight ahead and runs, overcomes the barrier and moves forward? Are you the one that lets the barrier kind of snag you up and in fact you just give up and you turn around and go back? Um, or do you plow on and, and once you see um, a number of your colleagues and stuff moving forward then you feel like you have the confidence to move forward or you don't want to get left behind? Um, so just think about that just for a moment, um, and, and that's kind of a lead-in to get us to think of reflectively about um, this idea of integrating technology in the classroom. So no good presentation is, is complete without a good Venn diagram, right? So I've got this um, Venn diagram. This is actually modified from a, another model, but I'm not going to get into that too much at this point. But here, here's a couple things. <clears throat> You've got your content, um, and you know what it is that you need to teach your students, what you want your learners to uh, learn, your learning targets. Um, and you probably even have your learning strategy, the things, the tools, the tricks that you use, the pedagogy that you apply um, to that to make sure that your, your kids, your learners, get and grasp that content. But when it comes to the technology, um, which technology are you using and which makes the most sense? So if you can find that sweet spot, that place where all three of these things come together, your content, your learning strategy, or your pedagogy, and what technology is the best fit, 
that's the place you want to be. That's the sweet spot when it comes to integrating technology in the classroom. It's not easy. I'm not saying that it's easy at all. Um, it's a challenge, and sometimes it's more challenging than others. But just the thinking of it in this way sometimes makes it a little easier. Let me give you another way of thinking about it, too. So think about the technology that you want to integrate. Maybe you've got a tool that you think, hey, you know, this would be a really good uh, tool to talk about or to help my learners grasp a particular concept. So ask yourself these questions. Does this tool, one, benefit the learning of my students? Is it going to make their learning better? Always start with the learning. Learning is the most important thing. And starting with your kids and being focused on your learners is the most important part of integrating technology or anything in the classroom. Um, and then, secondly, ask yourself, does it benefit the function of my classroom? Is this going to strengthen best practices? Does it support my, my learning methodologies and that sort of thing? And then also there's that practical side. Technology should make our lives easier. Now, sometimes this is a delayed gratification sort of thing, right? You, you get to the point where you spend a lot of time investing up front in getting the technology right, but once you get it and you kind of get your, um, your system set up and working, then things work really smoothly and it really ultimately makes your life easier in the long run. So you think about those things. You start at the top, you kind of work your way down to here, and you say, do all these things come together and is the benefit worth the time that I'm investing in this tool? Now, again, think about those barriers that we talked about or thought about in the previous um, slides. Sometimes you'll hit those barriers and they you may identify it as a barrier, but you realize it's a barrier that can be overcome. So that time invested may be a barrier to start with, but you realize if you chip away at it, over time you'll come up with something and some tools that will really benefit you in the long run. So sometimes an upfront investment pays off in the long run. Keep that in mind. So this is where SAMR comes in. Now SAMR, the beauty of SAMR is its simplicity. It's a really easy thing for a teacher to use to really assess a lesson and where technology falls into it. This is the graphic you'll see everywhere. If you search Google for SAMR, this graphic is going to come up everywhere. Um, and this is what SAMR stands for, what the acronym stands for. So essentially it's like this. You have it, we'll start here at the substitution and we're going to work um, through the different steps or the, well, really not steps, but the different um, areas of SAMR. Substitution. Let's talk about substitution for a moment. In substitution, technology is acting as a direct tool substitute. There's no real functional change. It doesn't really change the, uh, the lesson or the outcomes of the learning at all, but technology is just substituting. Um, what what you may have done traditionally on paper or, or otherwise. At the augmentation level, technology is acting as a substitute, but you get some functional improvements, so things are a little bit better, but really nothing has changed as far as the learning outcomes. And then you see that little dotted line. Above that line, interesting things start to take place. Interesting things start to happen in the classroom and with learning. At modification, the technology really allows for a significant task redesign, so you, the whole learning task changes and starts to become something different and maybe possibly more effective than previous levels of technology integration. That's modification. And then finally, the redefinition level, the technology is actually allowing for creation of new tasks that weren't even possible before. Your learners are able to do things that they've never been able to do in the past. So I know that's a lot. Maybe it doesn't make sense. So let me walk you through an example. We can talk about what this actually looks like in the classroom. And since we're going to be focusing a lot on Google Apps in the classroom and Chromebooks and that sort of thing, we'll start there with an example. Whoa, let's back up just a bit. Okay, so at the substitution level, let's say you have students write a research paper on birds. Okay, and so students would typically handwrite that that uh, or type up that um, that document and share it with you. You would make comments and write, and there would be that sort of back and forth um, uh, writing improvement um, over time. Well, rather than handwriting a short research paper, students would use Google Docs to write that paper, print it, and turn it into the teacher for feedback. That would be substitution level. We're actually just taking the, uh, the task of writing a research paper and substituting the technology for the same thing. So here we may be getting a little bit of improvement out of it, but basically it's the same thing that we were doing all along, just digital. Now for some things, that's okay. That may be the best application of the technology. We'll come back to that idea in a bit, so that's okay. 
Now, let's go up to the next level. Let's talk about augmentation level. So here, we're doing the same task. We're still writing a research paper about birds, our favorite bird or whatever. But here, the students are using um, the built-in tools like spell check that's built in to improve their spelling. Um, maybe they're using some of the other built-in tools to add a graphic or an image to their paper and really um, improving it in a lot of ways and leveraging some of that. So um, they are finding um, misspelled words, maybe they're using the, the thesaurus tools, they're adding images to their paper, but they're still essentially doing the same thing. They're writing a paper. Um, it's just got some improvements now. That would be an augmentation level of, of uh, SAMR. So let's move forward a little bit more and see what happens when we begin to move beyond that little dotted line and um, integrate the technology in other new ways. So at the modification level, again, remember here the technology allows for really a significant redesign of the task at hand. So here, you might see a group of students collaboratively writing. That's the cool thing about Google Drive and Google Docs is that multiple people can co-author um, papers, presentations, whatever. They can, we can work collaboratively. And that's a really powerful 21st century skill that we want our learners to have because that's the kind of thing they're going to be doing out in the workforce. So here, kids are working together to create um, a, a co-authored paper about birds, maybe in this area. And instead of printing it out and turning it into the teacher, they're sharing it digitally with the teacher using the share function of Google Drive. Now the teacher's using the commenting tools um, to highlight certain areas and ask for um, some changes in the writing, maybe citations, whatever it is. Um, and likewise, the students are collabor collaborating and peer reviewing within this. This is not something that could be easily done uh, with pen and paper um, or pencil and paper in the old days. So this is something where we've got a really significant redesign of the task um, because the digital technology is really allowing us to take it way further than we ever had before. Um, this is also awesome because uh, with this technology, a student who was absent during the day could contribute from home. They could be part of that group contributing um, to the writing of this paper without actually being physically in the classroom. Again, that's a modification of what we were doing before with the old way of doing things. Okay, let's move forward and look at what redefinition might look like. In redefinition, we have a completely new way of doing things. It's a the whole original task is completely different. And probably what the research shows is, is that the learning in a redefined or re redefinition level uh, of digital integration is completely, it's improved. Um, there's significant improvement to the learning um, and you really get some cool stuff out of it. So here's an example. We took that same task of write a research paper about a particular bird and here we have a group of students coming together to co-author a field guide, a digital field guide about Surrey County birds. And they're actually using that to, sh to share it. They're going to publish it as a web page, both for a teacher the, in the elementary level who's doing a unit on um, local wildlife with their, with their students, but also as a resource, as a, and they can publish it as an ebook um, that can be digitally downloaded from any, by anybody in the whole world, um, or especially here in Surrey County who might have an interest in local birds. So that is a that's a complete change of what our original task was and something that's only possible, something that's completely new and different that that we can do because the technology enables us to do it. So it is the entire task has been redefined and it's opening up new worlds of possibilities for our students. So that's what SAMR is. It's a way of looking at technology integration and it is designed for teachers to evaluate a lesson and say, you know, I'm looking at this lesson, I've got my content, I've got my pedagogy, but how are some ways I could leverage technology to take the learning further? That's what SAMR is all about. Okay, so let me give you a really great analogy that I found. Um, this is by uh, an educator named Carl Hooker. This is an amazing analogy, and it really kind of brought it home for me. Now, if you look in the resources in our haiku section for this, there's going to be links to these blog posts where this came from. So this is not an original idea. Uh, full disclosure, full credit where credit is due. But this is a great analogy and a good way of understanding what the SAMR model is. So think of the SAMR model as a swimming pool. Okay, your classroom is this swimming pool, and there are different levels of, of being involved in that pool. 
So you have the substitution level augmentation, modification, and redefinition. So let's walk through each of those uh, parts of the pool and think about it in terms of, we'll use this analogy, really probably abuse it a little bit here, but you'll get the idea. So the substitution level, this is like going to the kiddie pool. And sometimes the substitution level is the most appropriate place to be when it comes to technology integration. Uh, sometimes you just want to sit in the shallow water, um, splash, cool off a little bit, um, and get your feet wet. This is a place where you can take your learners and it is completely safe. Nobody's really going to drown here. You, you've got uh, clear boundaries. It's small. It's very shallow. Um, and, and you may stay here for a bit because this is where your comfort level is at. Or you may stay here because this is the application of the technology that best meets the learning goals. Um, and that is okay. Now, you, you may intend to take your learners to the deeper waters le later and with other lessons, and that's fine too. So it's easier to take uh, learners out of this area too. So if, if, you're, if your students are kind of new to this idea of technology integration and you need to help them learn to navigate these waters, this is a great place to start. Sometimes the kiddie pool is just where you want to be. But let's look at what happens when we go into the big pool. And we're going to start out in the shallow end of the water. Now, here, this is like the augmentation level. Your learners have a lot more room to move about in the pool. Okay, you've given them some options of tools to use, of technology tools to use in the classroom. Maybe they can choose to um, create a presentation, create a field guide, create a document, whatever. Um, you have lots of, uh, you give them lots of options, but you're still there kind of directing the process all along. Um, they get to choose and have more freedom of the tools that they use, um, but everybody's still really safe. I mean, this is a, a fairly risk-free area. Um, it's a little deeper, they can do more things, um, but if they if they get a little bit worried or whatever, they can still put their feet on the ground and, and stand up and keep their head above water. Um, but what you'll notice as an educator here, to take the analogy a little further, is there's not much, once you get to this point, separating you from the deep end of the pool. It's really just a rope. And so um, you think sometimes maybe this is a good place, but maybe there's something on the other side of that rope that's pretty powerful as well. So let's look and see what that might look like. So now you've moved beyond the rope with your learners, and this is really the deep end of the pool. So we're at the modification level. Your learners have the basics of swimming down. They've, they've been in this, this technology pool for a while, and they've got that mastered. Um, and what you realize is that rather trying, than trying to direct each individual student and guide them through this technology, they've built the capacity, and you've built the capacity in your classroom that you can really kind of step aside uh, maybe sit on the lifeguard stand and watch your learners in this pool. And what you'll find is that um, the learners are, are really comfortable here. They can hold their breath longer. They can swim underwater. They can swim down to the bottom and touch the bottom of the pool. And they're doing really interesting things. Now, you're still there to make sure no one drowns, of course. Um, but they're really doing interesting things with the technology. They're taking the technology and using it in really interesting ways and they're really excited to show you how they take a particular tech tool and master the learning so they want to show you what they've learned here um, and what you'll find is that you're once you've taken a lesson to this level that your learners probably really enjoy both the challenge of it but at the same time the learning and the freedom and the things that are going on here um, so this is a good good time to uh, um, really kind of step aside and, and you become you take on that role of sort of the guide on the side rather than the sage on the stage sort of you and you're letting your learners um, work in this part of the pool um, explore the technology and use that technology to demonstrate their learning this could be through projects or whatever um, now there may be times where you um, incorporate pool breaks so you say you know what we're gonna step out of the technology we may go back to the kiddie pool for a little while because that's a place where we need to be um, for this next lesson but you might come back to the deep end because you're gonna notice that your learners begin to do some amazing things here in this space. Now, notice we're not to the end yet. Let's go and take a look and see what happens at the redefinition level. The redefinition level is like taking your kids and, um, and we're going to go exploring even deeper. And what you realize here is there's no real bottom to the pool. It's almost like being in the open sea. Not really open sea. No, not that there's not boundaries or barriers. You're still there. You're still guiding the process, but you're taking on more of a coaching or mentorship role here. And here you're going to be blown away at how your, your, 
your students are taking um, the technology and leveraging it to demonstrate their learning. If they're taking it way far, they're doing things that you really didn't even know were possible, that they didn't know were possible until they began to explore it. Um, so again, you're still here making sure that the water is clean, you're guiding the process, but your learners are really taking charge. And this is where we get into the great personalized, customized learning that we're looking for. Um, and they're creating really authentic digital projects and, and digital work. Um, so again, sometimes lessons are best in this area, in the redefinition level. Sometimes you want to take them back on the other side of the rope, um, and that's fine too. Sometimes it's great to be in the kiddie pool, and sometimes it's okay just to lay out and not be in the pool at all. It depends on the lesson that you're doing and what you decide is the best use of the technology overall. So let's wrap up just a bit and kind of kind of bring this home a little bit. The SAMR model is a tool for you as an educator. This is designed to help you as the activator of learning in your classroom, really love that phrase, to decide um, and reflect on what digital tools are the best to use for the lessons that you, or the things that you want your learners to learn. And again, for some lessons, the substitution level is perfectly fine. For other lessons, you want to take your students into the deeper pool, into the pool, to really use technology in really interesting, exciting ways. Um, so redefinition may be where you take a lesson. That's fine. Um, you may find that a le it, with some lessons that digital tools aren't necessary at all, that some more traditional ways are the best way to get learners to do that. But the goal is, is that you as a reflective practitioner, as a professional, are looking at all these digital tools that we have and saying, where's the best place to use this tool? Is, is there a good place to use it? How can I maximize on the learning? And if you decide, you kind of go through the flow chart in your head and you decide, that yes um, this tool is going to make my life easier yes it's going to make learning better and more effective and it's going to be more engaging then yeah you definitely should use it it's okay to take baby steps all right it's okay to do just a little bit at a time think about a lesson pick a lesson that you have start small and start taking those initial steps you may already be using technology and you you look at a lesson and you say well I'm already at the um, augmentation level here and you might want to reflect on it as an educator. Well, could I take it further? Would it be appropriate and, and productive to take it further and take it to um, maybe the redefinition level or the modification level? That's up to you. That's what SAMR is about. SAMR is about thinking about how you incorporate digital tools in your learning. So um, I hope this has been beneficial to you. I hope SAMR gives you a way of thinking about technology in the classroom. Please don't hesitate to call on me. Um, I'm just an email or a tweet away um, and, and let me know how I can help you. Um, you have great tech trainers in your school. They're going to be helping you out as well. And, and let's really take learning to the next level um, and, and let's see what, what our learners can do. You're going to be really excited. I hope this has been helpful to you and I hope to hear from you soon. Have a great day.